Hi guys, what's up? It's me, Meet Pope. Today I want to talk about the whole situation that's happening in Cuba. Um, the reason that I decided I want to talk about it is because I saw that the Black Lives Matter team as a whole decided to give their freaking opinion about something that clearly they don't have any understanding about. And the fact that the Cuban people are actually protesting is because of communism. <clears throat> the first thing they want to say, America is a racist country. It's their fault. They're suffering. No, 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 no. Don't say any weird stuff like that. So we're going to start off with a tweet. The tweet is already very gangster. Black Lives Matter condemns the US federal government inhumane treatment of Cubans and urges it to immediately lift the economic embargo. This cruel and inhumane policy institute with explicit intention of destabilizing the country and undermining Cubans' rights to choose their own government is at the heart of Cuban's current crisis. Really? Since 1962, the United States has forced pain and suffering on the people of Cuba by cutting off food? No, they didn't. Medicine and supplies? They didn't that either. And causing the tiny Iceland an estimate of so many billion dollars. A hundred and thirty billion dollars. Really? No, the only reason things are getting like really bad, for example, is the fact that Cubans were so dependent on one sole thing, like tourism, and once COVID hit, they didn't have it anymore. Oh, flip, we can support anything anymore. I guess it's the people's fault. Without that money, it's harder for Cuba to acquire medical equipment needed to develop its own COVID-19 vaccine and equipment for food production. Really? Do you really think all the countries are making their own vaccine and just putting that in their body? This comes in spite of the country's strong medical care and history of lending doctors and nurses to disaster around the world. When you go as a tourism and you have a fun time, you're like, tour, oh my God, Cuba is gay, great. People are freaking happy. There's no, there, well, I know there's dictatorship, but it's not that strong. No, because people have been trained. They've been living in that situation. But once they started realizing that, hey, there's like food over there. Can I eat it? It's going go. It's gonna go bad tomorrow. The tourist isn't here. I might, right? Try your luck. Black Lives Matter was never about Black Lives Mattering. It's always been about a cultural revolution. It's always been about bringing in Marxism and communism through the use of black people dying. And if that doesn't sound cruel, disgusting, and evil to people right now, it's time to wake up and really understand. So it's like, it, it just surprises me, like a country has an issue, and you go there, and you're going to be like, nah, man, it's about America. It's not about America. And if you don't believe me, the next video that I'm going to show you is people waking up, people getting arrested on live TV, and a bunch of Facebook posts from Cubans that have a different perspective of what people are talking about. Um, and their statement was basically paragraph after paragraph directed towards the U.S. and asking them to end the embargo. Which, yes, the embargo is terrible, and yes, it does affect Cubans on the island. The embargo isn't terrible, no, okay? It isn't. Until you release political prisoners, have free and fair elections, and don't starve your citizens to death, then the embargo will be lifted. And let That is true. No freedom of speech, no freedom of prem, restriction to freedom of religion, no freedom of express association, restricted freedom to assembly, no freedom to keep and bear arms, full state control of the media, arbitrary detention and imprisonment without due process and trial. That's like a Me Too movement, but for everybody. Travel restriction, no free enterprise, heavy taxation, politician prison, abuse of executive of, pol of politician opposition, citizen oppression of coercion, fear and punishment, forced labor camps, and abuse of prisoners in camps that don't produce enough food for them, but actually for the hotel. What the heck? Control of access to information, forced youth labor and agriculture camps, use of police coercion and brutality. People, I can go on. They're protesting and they're screaming. Libertad. They are asking for freedom. The concern of the people isn't the embargo. It's the authoritarian dictatorship they are living under. People are not going hungry because there's an embargo. There is fish and lobster in hotels for tourists, but no food for the people. There's no food for the people 
but there's food in supermarkets that you can only purchase from if you have U.S. dollars. And the people do not earn in U.S. dollars. There are fruits and vegetables that go bad in the countryside because the government doesn't collect it in time. But if a Cuban were to collect it to give it to their family, they would be imprisoned. The healthcare system in the middle of a pandemic is a disaster, but there's money to build hotels. And when foreign countries try to offer aid, the Cuban government rejects it. With people dying in the hallways of hospitals, in the statement, the organization says that Cuba time and time again has supported black and brown people. Black and brown people are disproportionately affected by the regime. If you look at the Cuban dissidents and the activists that have been imprisoned for trying to speak out against the government this year, a lot of them are black and brown. The most important dissident in Cuba right now is black because they are disproportionately affected. Black Lives Matter, you are the face of protest all over the world, yet you have nothing to say about a government that does not grant its people freedom of assembly, nor does it grant its people freedom of speech. A government that right now has cops brutalizing its people, a government whose leader encourages people to go out and fight the people of the town, a government that is ripping teenage boys from their homes to be put in a draft to fight their own people. And you have no comment on that? If you have no comment on that, then it becomes crystal clear to me that before black lives and before ending police brutality comes your political ideology. That is what's on top for you. That's your priority. And I actually believe the only reason that Black Lives Matter isn't saying anything about that is because they know that if they call out specific stuff that is happening in Cuba, everybody is going to call them out like, yeah, but you did, you're, you're doing this too. Because the whole technique Marxist system is actually not far off from communism. I'm going to speak in English about what's going on in Cuba because I don't hear a lot of English speakers talking about this and my generation talking about this. Cuba has been under dictatorship for 62 years. So people, for naturally, for the last 62 years, since 1960s and 1958, around there, people started making homemade boats that we call lanchas and have bringing them to the coast of, of Florida seeking shelter. Let me explain to you why, because you might be saying, well, they're just immigrants invading because they want to leave their home country. No, it's because us Cubans, we don't complain about anything. It takes a lot for us to complain. And this, I'm sick and tired of it. So let me tell you what's going on. There's no coffins for dead bodies. If you have a dead family member, they get pronounced dead. They get wrapped in a bed sheet. You get, you get, the, you get delivered the dead body, and you have to take it home with you. What you do with the body, they don't care. You have to figure it out. If you don't have a car, they don't provide transportation, and you have to take the dead body home walking. There's no drinking water. Food costs 200 US dollars. A pound of rice costs 200 US dollars. You don't want to know how much a 10 pound one costs. My favorite part, Canadian dollars is the currency of Cuba right now. If you don't have family here in the United States to give you money, you have to figure it out. You have to figure it out. As I told you before, just like in Venezuela, once you have communist or weak socialist countries and the real money starts going down, they start creating different money in different sections to keep the rich rich because if they focus on that, they don't have to focus on the people. Because the only way you can get money in Cuba is if you get it sent to you by here. Oh, and here, it takes months to get to Cuba. They shut off their light and water at 7. As soon as the sun goes down, your electricity gets shut. Internet is shut right now worldwide in Cuba. That's why we're not getting any new news. But we have family there. Everybody's out on the streets right now, just the same way they were yesterday. They're out on the streets right now. There's no medication. There's no Advil. There's no antibiotics. There's no butterfly, butterfly needles. There's no IVs. There's nothing. There's nothing. And now is when people are hearing the screams out of Cuba. I'm sick and tired of this dictatorship. And my whole life, when we visited Cuba, you could not say a word against the government. But now I can go to my country and say, Dia Canel Singao. You, I don't think people actually understand how unique they have been living in such a situation. I was hearing stories in the 90s 
about people trying to escape that country, coming to my country. And I was asking my professor, but why is that possible? Why could they do that? Yeah, because they're in power. They are taking care of you. They're not very rich. But now with time, when I did my own study, I realized, wait, communism, isn't everybody supposed to be evenly rich? Then why the heck do you have them with US and the other with weird other currencies? Then I'm like, huh? What the heck is happening? It always the same. Communists never work in any country. They always have a plan B. And the plan B usually includes the people that want the communism. It usually means those are the people that will get freaking rich. Well, the difference between Cuba and United States, I love it here. I'm American too. I, I like my 4th of July. I like my, my Americans. I'm, I feel it. I feel the red. You want to shift? Go to, go to a country that has it already. Don't come here and want to have it. You think it's easy. You think everything's free. You think everything's it's good, but it's, it's really not. Every Cuban that's outside Cuba right now flew because of communism. Communism is not good. It's not fun. It's not going to give you freedom. It's going to take it away from you. That wasn't real socialism. That wasn't real communism. We hear that a lot. Uh, like I said, if you think like that, go to Cuba. Listen to us, guys. Communism sounds beautiful in theory, but it can never be taken to practice. Understand that. Communism kills. They take everything. They teach you. They tell you what to think, what to feel. They even control what music you listen to. Right now in Cuba, after 62 years of communism, kids are getting shot in the streets just for chanting freedom. There is no freedom in Cuba. You can't say what you think. They don't want communism. We want democracy. The problem is not the lack of food or the lack of medicine. It's the lack of freedom. If we have freedom, we will have food and medicine. You can bet on that. Communism and socialism is not good. And look, this guy, he's no hero. And the amount of people that are woke and the thing that are rebel and the wear this guy's shirts, you guys have no idea. He's never been a hero. He killed everybody. He used to kill, kill kids and kill homosexuals in Cuba just for being different. He used to kill Christians, telling them, oh, you believe in God? Well, tell God to save you now. Boom. He's no hero, and he's definitely no revolutionary. Are you seeing colleges start to teach students that these ideas, these communist ideas? Are what they're selling to the young people is just this uh, utopia, this idea that everything is going to be fine if you just hand out the power to a single person. I went through the college system here in the United States, and it's just obvious that that's what's happening. I went to Howard University, and there is a lot of professors over there teaching that Cuba is great, Cuba, Cuba is not great, it's never been great. Since day one, they took the weapons, they took your freedom of speech, your freedom to assemble. You can't say what you feel. In Cuba, you ask them, did you have breakfast today? No, I don't like to have breakfast. It's not that they don't like it, it's that they don't have it. But if you say, I don't have enough food to have breakfast, you're speaking against the government. Automatic political prisoner. The idea of democracy is greater than communism. The idea of capitalism is greater than communism. And I say it to all of the students, you got to study it. Every time communism is put in place, it ends up in a dictatorship. When Fidel Castro, the dictator, came in power, first of all, he took the guns from everybody. And then he killed the smart, intelligent intellectuals. Remember the professors, the intellectuals, you go first. And then they indoctrinate everybody. They send them to schools, to special schools to indoctrinate you. Right now it's being pushed to the left, but we need to push it to the right. What's your message to college students who say that America is an oppressive place? America is an oppressive place. Look what is going on here. Look at everybody walking around freedom here. If this was the house of Diaz-Canel, we will be all killed right now. We will be all dead. So where is... Where is the oppression? And when there is oppression, you can go to the courts, you can go to the TV, you can go to the government, you can go anywhere. But in Cuba, you cannot go anywhere. And over here, oppression and whatever goes wrong with the government, it is known and it is published and it is investigated. I went on a vacation there with all a good time and we talked all the people, they didn't fear for their lives. They said it in a normal, peaceful way. They didn't have like a second look because they used to it. 
They're like, why would I even open my mouth? Because these dumb tourists come here to make it a gangster opinion. So I'm going to tell them how I feel. And when I get arrested, I know in the next few days they're on a plane and says, hey, man, I just saw, saw something weird. But hey, it was just one case. It's not the majority. Do you remember there was a time in UK it started appearing on TV that police were just knocking on your door? Tuk, tuk, tuk. Hey, man, we are the thought police and we want to talk about this. You kind of like this weird tweet. We want to know just where you're coming from because we don't want you to think like that. Do we really want want people to believe that do that like a normal thing now imagine how do you think this starts simple no it's a slow snowball and you don't say anything nobody's complaining well what the heck happened yeah that's now the new normal come you have to calm down lady by the way don't, please don't tell me you're recording me. You live in a country where police have to record themselves. And now they're going to try to remove the phone. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And she's like, come on, man. This is, this is horrible. As she was saying in the beginning. No, 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 no. Why is the military coming? The military, not even the police, the military. There's even documentation that they say people are hiding in civilian clothes, ready to rip you a new one. Estoy en un momento, estoy dando la entrevista super nerviosa porque a mí me acabaron de citar a... I'm actually very nervous right now doing this interview because I've I just received a notice. So they are aware that she's doing something or telling people outside of the country how the situation is realistically, right? Because there's like no internet or it's very hard to send any information outside. So you get an idea what the heck is going to happen. La seguridad, la, la seguridad la está, está allá afuera. Security is outside looking for her. Está afuera la seguridad. Tengo que salir. She has to go out. Te están llamando. Sí, voy, voy a dejar a mi amiga aquí. Sí, sí, sal, sal, nos quedamos en espera aquí. And now she's gonna let the friend try to hold the camera record. I'm like, dude, you're gonna be a gangster accomplice. But the thing is, people are tired. If you're so hungry, but just keep seeing the money keep going to the most biggest places and all the like the even the son of Castro has like Facebook pictures online that he said living the good life. Of course, you get tired. You don't want to live in a country like that. It's freaking unfair. And you keep you have to keep lying that it's great. Nah, man. So let's just say around this time, 148 people were arrested or disappeared, and she actually thought she might be the next one. Hago, hago, yo hago responsable al gobierno de cualquier cosa que me pueda pasar. Eh, Tina, me tengo que ir. I believe this news channel is saying that somebody might have called somebody quite in security or whatever and actually report this woman and that's why the police went to their location we are not the left we are not the right we are from below and we are going for the people at the top you know that that's a gangster alliance remember they caught the internet the greatest weapon is not a gun or a bomb it's the one that controls the information worldwide and they can manipulate what the people would consume and if you think about it, isn't Facebook and YouTube the one where people get their news, right? Aren't they trying to get a new law passed so they can block everybody? They can block everybody. And if you ban one, everybody needs to ban him too. Who is deciding that? Isn't that USA? It's like they want to do be like, like, hey, when to fight China, we have to be like China. I'm like, dude, what's wrong with you? The, the, what was this called? Polinsky, this weird girl that always keeps appearing. I have to I have to need to circle back at your ass or something like that. Well, that same woman talks very positive about the Cuban fighting for their lives. But she can't she she's not going to pinpoint the plans of the Cuban system because she also knows that if she pinpoints those things, it's going to backfire on her ass and she keeps to have to circle back, circle back 24-7. Do you think that people are leaving Cuba because they don't like communism? I think we've been pretty clear that we think people are leaving Cuba or not leaving Cuba or protesting in the streets all as well because uh, they are opposed to the oppression, to the mismanagement of the government in the country. And we certainly support their right to protest. We support uh, their efforts to speak out against their treatment in Cuba. They don't talk bad about the communism, but we support how you don't like the communism. But we don't see like a big 
point there because I think the government just manages wrong. It's a communism with bad leaders. It's still freaking communism. It didn't start with the gas chambers. It started with one party controlling the media, one controlling the messages, one party deciding what is the truth, one party censoring speech and silencing opposition, one party dividing citizens into us and them and calling their supporters to harass them. It started when good people turned a blind eye and let it happen. But people are waking freaking up. Let me show you how the people are screaming outside. Hey, no president has the right to remove a mother's ability to communicate with his children and the kids of her brother or sister or any family. They have been kidnapped by our own people. We don't want any more abuse. Can you ima I, I, I don't even want to imagine that I'm so freaking poor, but I might be old and they take my two boys and be like, we're going to be, we're going to fight because we need to keep our country safe. And they're going to tell them we're going to give you money because if you do that, you can take care of your old papa because your papa is old. Imagine that my own kids fighting their own friends. That is a place that you want to consider normal. Why don't you get angry at the government? And you guys just have to be careful what you're wishing on your own freaking country. Communism? Oh man, you guys have no freaking idea. Anyway, just let me know what you guys think about this. Because I I'm just getting a brain fart right now. Okay? Like, share. And woof. I, I really hope that the Cuban people can get out of this, man. The, the last thing you want to do is get used to live with so little. And then be pushed even more and get the same treatment as if, hey man, aren't you used to that? Don't get me wrong, my cosa quita bon, put a fire na mi blonde, kush hash purple skunk, criollo, colombici, jam jam, turlo, keta verdeta, welcome.